And we're always at a state of momentum. Whether your, your momentum could be declining, or that's when you don't do what you say you're gonna do, you don't honor your commitments, or you can be at a state of momentum where you're building, where you, know, you get up out of the morning, you get that workout in, boom, you're starting to build momentum. You're building that day and every day compounds, right? And so it's just, you're, you're always at a state of momentum, either going backwards or forwards. What's up, everybody? I've got a special guest here. We're going to talk about 10x in your referrals. We're going to talk about what happened when the world shut down. Me and this man were in the same room. We didn't know what happened. Here we are uh, more than a year later. COVID has passed. It seems like things are back to normal. And, you know, roofing contractors, contractors, door to door guys are going crazy scaling their business. Some of the guys had the best year ever last year. Some of the guys didn't. And Eric, you work with a lot of door-to-door -door guys, contractors. Um, what do you think was the difference between the guys that won and the guys that lost? The, the people that adapted, the people that said, hey, we're going to figure it out. Really what it came down to, it's like, you know, people crumbled and they said, oh, no, this is the end of my world. Or people said, we're going to win despite the circumstance. And that I, was the biggest difference. I love what you did, man. You just jumped in your car. You were in North Carolina <laughs> at the time. You're like, I'm going to go make a fucking sell, a big sell to a well. <laughs> Lee, I'm coming down to see you and I'm going to sell you some shit. Oh my gosh, dude. I'd I already bought that. some shit. I knew I was going to buy some shit. But. Bro, you, I called you and I was like, you get, give me a date and time, Lee. It's try hard to get you on the phone, man. You're so yeah. busy. And you're like, all right, this date, I'll be there. I said, okay, don't forget me. I'm going to be there. I catch you a couple times. You never hit me back. And then I just showed up one day. I had to go to this office. I had office. no fucking clue he was coming. I had yeah. no clue. You were pacing outside. I was like, Lee. He's like, oh, he's actually here. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. No, man. Eric, we met at the door-to-door uh, -door conference, Sam Taggart's door-to-door -door conference. And, you know, he's really helped me a lot with uh, getting more referrals, networking with realtors. And so during this episode, you're going to hear about uh, creative gr gifting strategies, how you can use the law of reciprocity to your advantage. And, you know, Eric is a uh, state champion wrestler. National champion. I want to say it's three times. National champion wrestler. And if you watch this podcast, you know that we're going to be breaking down kind of like the mechanics of uh, winning the fight for your dreams and, and, and winning the fights. Uh, you have a twin brother as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my dad and my uncle were brothers and they grew up fighting each other. But it, it, out, out of the fight comes, comes the fire, man. And mm -hmm. so uh, forged by fire, those, those knives forged by fire. What you got there? What is this? Tell me about your business. Tell me what's your story. Yeah, man. So my story, um, you know, I was, grew up in Miami, went to wrestling in college in North Carolina. And... Uh, had some success there, and I I, I realized I was I need I, I knew I wanted to be in business, and I need to get some experience. So I started selling Cutco knives. Oh, nice! A lot, right? a lot of a lot of people do that, but you're taking it to the next level. Yeah, well, you know, I, I did about three thousand in-home presentations over a two-year period, um, really like learning the this craft is, of skills. Dude, Cutco has an amazing company. They have an they they send letters directly to yeah. high schoolers. I did that. I recruited sixty-three sales reps in six week and uh, three months. Oh my God! Yeah. How old were you? I was uh, I was a junior in college. I was twenty two. Wow, twenty two years old. You yeah. rep, you recruit sixty three reps in three months, and you got to train them on a sales process. Yep. And so, uh, talk to me about how Cutco trained you and what that's really kind of set you up for success in life, and what maybe contractors or door to door people can apply from their 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 whole company and how they operate. Oh man, I mean, whew, there's a lot there. So. Well, their process for recruiting, for mm -hmm. example, was uh, I did group, group interviews. So I would do ads everywhere. Receptionists would set people up. And then we'd have five to 20 people in about an hour and a half interview. There'd be a pre and post screen. So you bring two people in. Usually you boot one, you keep one. Um, then you do the, the, um, the group interview, which is basically kind of a sales pitch for the position. Um, and then you do a post screen. And then you hire them on and set them off for training. You just do big group trainings every week. Um, and yeah, you'd launch kids. And then at the last day of training, we would do uh, personal recruits. And so we'd have a contest and I'd have them give me 50 to 100 of their friends. And then we'd call those people the next week and set them for interviews. And we were just constantly recruiting. And that was the name of the game in management. Now I do something different now with the business gifting, but that's how I started. That was back in 2012. Well, I mean, that's really relative to uh, contractors who have a hard time, whether they're hiring managers or they're hiring people to go door to door and sell their, you know, products, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's retail or insurance restoration, you know, everybody wants to know the secrets to recruiting, but they don't realize it's hard work. Oh yeah. That's the secret. 
Yeah. It's hustle. I mean, I was running two interviews a day with 15 people in each interview. Did you have coordinators, recruiting coordinators? How'd you... Yeah, so I had three receptionists, uh -huh. and basically they would have... See, um, to a roofing contractor, the idea of a receptionist or an admin or a recruiting coordinator, it's like a foreign fucking language. I mean... <laughs> Dude, somebody's got to set them for interviews. I mean, seriously. And so that's why they never recruit. They never actually get somebody to help them, and mm. they... And, you know, they, they want to recruit, they know how to recruit, but they just can't do it. Mm. Mm. I mean, it's just, I don't think it's a secret, is it, like, to recruit? Well, what I thought was cool is how does, how, do, how does Cutco get the high school kids? Yeah, dude, so the, the, main, the main value add to a high school kid is what is high school kids looking for? Some quick money. And resume. Okay. Yeah. Resume, dude. Right. The biggest thing is, hey, what are you going to do in life? Mm -hmm. What are you doing now to prepare you for that? Whatever that is. Uh -huh. You're going to need the sales. You're going to need sales because you want to teach. You got to say your students on why they need to listen to you, right? You're going to be a parent. You got to say your kids on why they need to listen, right? And, uh, and, and everything. We know this, right? And so the biggest thing was finding out what they wanted out of it, whether it was income, experience, whatever it was, and then showing them how that fit into what we did for them or with them. Well, dude, I'm telling you, I know that, you know, contractors are out there and they don't realize that the young people, they, they're, they're looking at the trades a little bad. They're like, you know, we don't really want to do the jobs. You know, that's for, uh, you know, immigrant force. We don't, a lot of people out there don't want to go into the trades. You said it yourself. You're a wrestler. You said, I'm not going to make my money off my body. You know, mm -hmm. you know I said, why not? Why, why not be a UFC fighter? Yeah. You know, you said, yeah. no, nah, I don't want to do that. You don't want to. And that's what people look at in construction. And so they think that they're going to get hired and they're going to go to work with their hands and they don't mm -hmm. want to do that, you know? Yeah. And so contractors are always trying to figure out how to make their business opportunities sexy. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you, you, you give gifts and you're still a part of Cutco Knives. So I'm sure people are like, well, I've heard of Cutco. I don't want to mm -hmm. be a part of your company. Yeah. They, they kind of, kind of clown your company a little bit too. I'm sure sometimes even recruiting now a little bit. Because you have a sales team, right? Yeah. Now, it's a little different what I do now. There's a couple different avenues in the Cutco world. There's like the management world, and there's like the, sale, the CSPs, Cutco Sales Professionals, mm -hmm. right? These are people that are full-time sales reps. I've got a team of like 14 sales reps on my team, mm -hmm. and I just basically can hire outside or Cutco up-and-comers can join my team, mm -hmm. right? Um, and yeah, I think initially, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people know think that Cutco is a scam, mm -hmm. right? So that's that's the biggest thing we. I had, know that's what, that's, what that's the biggest thing we had to overcome. People walk in, they're like, Cutco's a scam. Yeah, Cutco's a scam, and it's like, no, there's just a bunch of people that failed as sales reps because sales has high turnover, yeah. and they need a scapegoat for their failures. Exactly. And so they said, oh, this is a scam. That's a scam. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so no, I mean, you get that sometimes, but I think when. You know, you have, a, you have you've, you've got a professional office, uh -huh. right? You've got a professional staff. It's a professional process. You're sharp. You're on point. Right. They're looking at you, going like, I don't know. Yeah. You know, and you got you just kind of win them over. And yeah, there's a there is a lot of stuff you gotta. Don't take it personal. Is the number one rule. Is and the thing is, is these contractors are door to door guys. You know, they're like one guy doesn't want to work for you and says your company <gasps> sucks. So what? You know how many people fucking didn't want to work for me and says my company sucks. People do work for me and say my company sucks. Yeah. You know the reality is, is like if you're gonna constantly worry about what other people are gonna say about your business, your business opportunity. See, the thing is, is I define myself as a man by the success of my business. So I take it. Personal when somebody says my business sucks, mm -hmm. especially since I'm a business coach and I'm a personal development guy. These guys come into my business. They can't k cut it with my core values. I want to believe in them. You know, you hire, mm -hmm. you want the optimist, you see the best in everybody and they, they, they don't make it. And then they, they, it turns nasty. And so it's so funny to watch them on the internet, try to vilify me and call me a s scam and crazy stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Bottom line is if you're a contractor and you're wanting to hire and grow and you're letting maybe these possible pains stop you, it doesn't just happen to you. It happens to me. It happens to Eric. It happens to everybody. It's a part of the process. And, you know, recruiting is great, but all contractors get jobs. Everybody, if I was to ask my audience, are you a good person at selling at the kitchen table? I think 70, 80, 90% of them would say, yeah, I'm good contracting sales pro because I'm a salesy contracting coach if they're watching me i mean chances are they're probably learning some of the, some of the things and mm -hmm. you have a, a, a really really unique way to turn a contracting deal a sale into three four five deals mm -hmm. and you know it's a sales process i've used when you were first you know talking with me i, I knew it was a great idea from the beginning but i was hesitant about the cost mm -hmm. um but 
really the process of every time that we have a happy client, sending them a, a, a board, a cutting board and a mm-hmm. knife, and then getting them to call us and extracting referrals and making sure that we get good reviews. Yeah. It's been a complete game changer for my business. That's why I wanted to bring you onto my podcast. And I wanted my viewers, contractors that want to get more jobs through referral and to, to learn a little bit about this process. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll be happy to share. Um, before I jump into that, just just so we were talking about like people not wanting to work with you, I had about a, if we had a 60% show to the interview, that was good. And if I had a 50% show to training day one, that was good. If I had a 75% show to day two, that was good. You know, nice. so, so like, like, yeah, I was, I was running through people, but that's, it's, it's a numbers game, right? And, and you're going to find the people that are going to align with the business and, and they'll stick with you, you know, but um, everybody else. Well, those are gold nuggets that people often overlook because they want the easy answer. They want the funnel. And mm-hmm. when I say recruiting funnel, what we do is we take them from Indeed and we do group interviews through Zoom. So it's a little bit more technologically efficient way to Mm -hmm. meet them all in person. And then we give them access to a university and we only really kind of do business with the people who uh, perform well and who actually finish the task. And then they show up and that's already eliminated a lot of the losers. And so, yeah, there's less people that fail from that point forward, but there's still a ton of failure. Mm -hmm. And in sales particularly, you know, the average... Uh, man, it's, you know, it's pretty easy in my mind to sell a million dollars in roofing business in a year, but the average is more like three or 400,000. And it's because there's so many lames that come in and, you know, flunk out after five or 10 deals. And the reality is your system has to, has to work for all of them. Mm -hmm. How did Cutco deal with the people that were in and out in so much turnover? You know, I think sales naturally is going to have a lot of turnover. Um, they were fine their systems, but at the end of the day, they, I mean, it's still high turnover today, you know? Um, and there's young kids too. They're like 18 years old, 20 years old. So like their personal responsibility, you know, you're dealing with a college kid. Is there any Cutco influencers? Um, is there any Sam John Taggart's Rulin? Lee hates of, I'd say, of Cutco I'd say there's, world? There's John Rulin. Let me write this guy's down, name down. Why am I doing this strategically? Because I'd like, I'll call this guy, ask him to be on his podcast. We'll create content together mm-hmm. and- then maybe some of the people that are in the Cutco world can learn about roofing. Yeah. And that is a great community of people to recruit from. One of my friends, Grant Cardone, this guy named Todd Straw works for Grant. He built a multi-million dollar Cutco business before he became like a, a director of sales over there. He's in charge. And, you know, they there's a huge, great community of there. So what's what's the guy's name? Um, so John Rowland, he's disconnected. He's an influencer in just the world. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say he's an inf- he is an he holds influence in Cutco. Um, but yeah, I mean, if anybody wants to connect with the Cutco world, you know, you're the guy. Yeah. I mean, there's literally, Hey, what, what do you want to do? So the Cutco guys look up to you as a guy who's built a multi-million dollar business that I mean, yeah. you've done millions of dollars in sales, yeah. way more than most. Yeah. What's your company record? Like uh, compared to other people, like, well, right now, they told me the other day, you look like you said it out like a hundred thousand dollar a day or something, didn't you? Uh, I sold about a hundred thousand dollars, 140,000 about two days. Oh, no shit. Yeah. I ain't um, buying a hundred thousand dollars worth of knives today. Okay, just yeah. let you know. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, anything's possible. Um, no, nah, man. So uh, yeah, if anybody wants to connect, I mean, we're always looking for also opportunities that we can promote to them. Like, hey, w- you know, the Cutco pitch when they're recruiting people is, w- you you probably won't be here forever. If you are, awesome, but you're gonna go off and do something else great in the world, and we want to help connect you and, and support you in that path. And so, if there's other people, you know, like other contractors that want to tap into that network of kids that. Eh, they're not gonna sell knives forever. They're gonna do something though. Mm. You know what I mean? There's there's definitely a big pool of people there that that's already been trained in sales. But um, dude, so to get back to your question here, so I, I ran those that branch office, then I started doing Cutco sales while I was wrestling in college, mm-hmm. right? Um, so you were a collegiate wrestler. Yep. Yep. And you won the national championship. I won university nationals mm-hmm. in Greco, and then I was top five in the world team ladder mm-hmm. um, for a couple years. And then I was like, all right, if I don't make top three this year, I'm going to start making money and start a business. And Mm so I took fifth in the U.S. Open, Mm -hmm. and then I was like, all right, it's time to start start and go full in with my my business, you know? Because you were training 40 hours a week? No, I was was training probably two times a day, uh, two hours a session, so... Jesus, that's still a lot of... I'd say 15 to 20 hours in training a week, um, five days a week, right? Um, when you're not training, you're nursing your injuries. Yeah, yeah, and also didn't get injured as much back then. Uh, but yeah, I definitely try to keep take care of my body now. I definitely feel it in my knees sometimes. Can't run more than like five, six miles at a time. It 
really starts to hurt. <laughs> yeah, let's see what percentage of my audience can run five, six miles at a time. <laughs> hey, <laughs> but hey. It, it, here's the deal. Um, you know, whenever we make a customer happy, we don't realize the value of that moment. And there's mm. so many times that we're one and done, that we do a job and it's over. And, you know, everybody thinks they're great at selling and getting referrals, but they get a lot of stuff going on and they don't really have a system. They don't have a way to not only make the customers happy, but they're, they just lose so many. It's, my rule is called the law of the six pack. Naturally, the referrals for a roofing project or, or an exterior pro construction project are going to be the people that can see the job. If they can see something working, people are curious, like, oh, mm -hmm. what's that? Especially yeah. if it's paid for by the insurance company. And so You're what, talking about the neighborhood? Yeah. And so the biggest thing that I will ask a customer when they call after we give them one of these cutting boards is, hey, um, have your neighbors got their roofs replaced yet? Are you close with your neighbors? Hey, what are their names? Do you have their phone number? We have a referral program, and I can take care of them. Uh, you know, just share me their information, and if they end up allowing me to do their project, we can give you a referral fee. Mm -hmm. So, um, the reality is, is that you know, when we met at the door to door con, I was hesitant about spending one hundred and thirty dollars a board. Mm -hmm. You got a knife and a board combo, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, since then, I mean, I, we've we've got millions of dollars in jobs and referrals, and we have spent a lot more money. Then again, tell them about how the process works. Yeah. So, um, first thing you said, mentioned one and done, you got to recognize that every client, there's a lifetime value associated referrals could be repeat business. Right. And so, um, we put, use cutting boards. That's a big thing. A lot of people get caught up on is, well, why is a cutting board or a knife better than anything else? It's because it's, where's it used in the kitchen, which is where everybody hangs out. And so talk about people when you're getting that job done, if you give them a gift, right. When you get the deal, right. To, to do the work, um, you know, they're talking, their neighbors are talking like, oh, hey, look at this knife they gave me too. You know, like that's a good reputation that you're building there. But the strategy basically is to, you can do one or one or two ways you do it. So one is giving the gift as a button up after you sign the deal, right? Let's go so, through that. Okay. Because that saved one, a guy's deal recently, Yeah. Right? Well, somebody was coming knocking behind him. Mm -hmm. And so what he did- So you're good for Texas. Right now there's a bunch of storms in Texas. Yeah. And you sign up a contract and you want to hold the deal. Yep. And so what you do is you, you walk away. You don't tell them. You got to make it a surprise, right? So you walk away, have them in your car, right? You have them on hand. We got this really cool program. We'll stock them with you. We can break up. It's, it's a really cool thing. Anyway, so they're, 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 they're thinking, okay, cool. That guy left. You come back and you knock on the door. Hey, by the way, I just want to say I'm super thankful for you. We're looking forward to doing a bang up job on your, on your roof um, and serving you and everybody else that you know. So you're already kind of setting that frame for referrals, serving you and everybody else that you know. And that's why we want to get you Cutco knives. Mm. Because they're guaranteed forever, just like our service to you and, you and your friends. Nice. Right? And so you're giving a gift that's in alignment with what you want to achieve, right? And then, hey, we put our contact information on there. So if you ever need us, you can call us. If you ever have any problems with the roof when we're all done, right? And I had a, a guy text me. He was actually doing solar sales. And he sent me the screenshot of the guy that, that, that had texted me and said, hey, somebody tried to come knocking behind you. Can you believe that? You know, uh, trying to undercut your deal, man. But that knife you gave me, man, it was awesome. I, he was never going to do anything like that. So it was cool. Um, the other strategy is after everything's done, right? Again, want to hold that element of surprise. So what we do is we send another gift. Or oh, let's break this down a little bit because Andy Frisella has a special process for his first form in-person stores where they give people a T-shirt after their first purchase and it make it a real random occurrence and it creates real you know, people coming back for more. Mm -hmm. And he's teaching us this whole process during Arte. So listening to this, you contractors have to realize the law of reciprocity and what happens whenever you give somebody a gift, what, how easy is it to sell in that second? Like, what do you think? I mean, cause I know personally what it's like and I, and I can tell you that, um, it's hard always trying to convince as a salesperson. I don't want to convince, I don't want to convince you to give me referrals Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to convince you that I'm the best contractor for the job. Mm. I want to demonstrate it. And so the best way to demonstrate it is to give them a gift. It's one of the, one of the ways, right? We, we, like you said, you, you don't want to like ask for it, right? Like mm -hmm. you need it. What you want to do is cultivate a culture of, culture of raving fans where that client of yours, that customer would not let any of their friends use anybody else for the roof, but you, right? And how do you do that? This is just one step in the process. Obviously, you got to do a good job, right? You got to have good customer service. Gifts are part of that, right? Where you're going exceeding their expectations. Um, 
So yeah, you know, the other big thing is, is getting positive inbound calls from the client. A lot of people will ask them for an online review, but you know, like, oh yeah, sure, I'll get it done. One, you're calling them, asking them for something. Instead, how can we get them calling you in a place of gratitude and appreciation where you have that reciprocity, right? So we'll get this cutting board, we'll custom engrave it, we'll brand it, we'll send it to them with a note that says, call me to make sure you got this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they get the gift to see it's made for them. They call you, like, it's after the job is complete, the build's done. So they're not expecting it. It's like, oh my gosh, I got your gift today. Thank you so much. Hey, no worries. We appreciate you. We just want to let you know, um, you know, we're always here for you if you need anything. You can use it as an opportunity to ask for referrals. And then a lot of contractors right there on the spot, because most people will send a review link, but life happens. Oh yeah, sure, I'll get it when I'm done with dinner, right? You called them and asked for it instead of having them call you. Mm. And so on that spot, if you can funnel that call to somebody who can quickly text them a review, say, oh, hey, by the way, we're looking to improve our online presence. If I send you a quick review, would you be willing to fill it out for me? Oh yeah, sure, absolutely, no problem. Cool, we just sent it. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. I'll do it right now, right? You get way more reviews and way better reviews. And a lot of times, the lasting impression is the last interaction with the client. Guys, this is the thing. Reviews have made contractors a commodity. You are graded by your reviews. My biggest weakness right now is my lack of reviews. I need to be sending more fucking boards. I'll be real with you. I haven't implemented this system as much as I should have. This system has worked for me, and I'm going back to the draw board trying to scale it because the reality is it's like, you know, Whenever you have somebody checking you out and you're trying to teach a sales guy, how do you come overcome the objection? Uh, I've never heard of your company. How, how do I know if I can trust you? You just knocked on my door. There's no better way than to point at your five-star reviews. There's no better way than to get a, a group of raving fans that, mm -hmm. you, that you document. And, you know, in a world where we're, we're judged, uh, you know, by a Google, five contractors come up, Really, look, the more reviews that you have local to the area, if you're on the map, that's how Google gives you precedence to being the best qualified person to be the first person. Because right now, when, they, when you do Google, the map is at the top. And you got your paid advertisement, you got your map, then you got your results. And if you want to get to be that number one result, it's going to be judged based off of how many reviews you have. Mm -hmm. It's going to be judged off of you know, how you've been able to create these raving fans when you're selling and you're closing and the guys want to overcome the objection, they need to point to these reviews. And when you're holding the deals together, creating this culture, using, you know, this extra step, this is a clear and easy way to separate yourself from the competition. Most of my construction projects are over $15,000. Mm -hmm. Most of the time I am purchasing materials um, uh, let's just say silicone, felt, shingles, all that. Most of the time I'm spending about probably, I don't know, five, $6,000 in materials for every job. This is a building material as much as it is for referrals and why it's a marketing I'm, tool. And, and, and as a contractor, why do I see this as a completely different, unnecessary expense just because it's a cutting board, because it's a knife, that's why. And the reality is, is if I build it into the building cost and you have, I don't know, let's say you have $10,000 in building costs, what's $130 on $10,000? Yeah. You're talking about a, a, a very small percentage, 1.3% of the total material and labor bill, just so I can get potentially three referrals per cutting board. And, you know, maybe not for every job we get three referrals, but that's the goal. Yeah, well, you know, and the other thing that people don't recognize, if you're building a long-term business, like if you're going to be in and out of this industry, maybe it's not for you, but if you want to build a long-term business, how valuable is it to have a product that your client loves and uses every day for the next 20 years in the kitchen? Yeah, roofers should be selling solar. Roofers should also offer windows. And being a, I'm a general contractor, guys. So, you know, the clients that I've built roofs for, you know, we remarket them for windows, for solar, mm -hmm. and, you know, for our warranty services. And so, you know, you, I became a storm catcher here in Florida because I never want to leave. Uh, when I closed Grant Cardone on a roof, I was like, I went out after going to his office and put my feet in the sand. I'm like, I'm not fucking leaving this place. I'm moving here. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, you too, huh? Dude, well, I'm, I went away for college. I started my business up there. I was away for more than a decade. Oh my God. And, uh, you know, when everything went virtual, yeah. we like everything dropped out of the floor for me for about two weeks. And I was like, what, 
what am I going to do? When, I'm going to figure this out. Yeah, because right? you did nothing but trade shows, right? I did nothing but in person. So I do, I do, uh, like, like most of my business is with real estate, right? We got yeah. like five, seven thousand realtors. Mm -hmm. You know, probably three thousand plus are just my personal clients. Nice. And I've done eight hundred sales presentations to groups of realtors, mm -hmm. and they're all in person at offices or associations. And so overnight, every single one of those dried up. And then eventually we went to virtual and I was just cr even more efficient now because instead of driving here and there, that whole transportation is gone. Gone. Right. I'm on five minutes, generate my leads, turn around, set up the appointments, close the sales. Right. Nice. It was very, yeah, very quick. And after eight months, I was like, I love fishing. I love the water. Like I'm going back to Miami, <laughs> you know? And I also just got, you know, like five different sales reps in South Florida. So I was like, it's a perfect reason for me to go back. You nice. know? So I moved back in January. Hell yeah, bro. Well, congratulations. You were talking about that last time you were down. We got to do more collaborating, man. We got we got we got to do some fishing. We got to do some we got to do some selling. But reality is, guy, you got all these real estate clients. Roofing contractors want realtors to refer them jobs. Realtors mm -hmm. are also white collar salespeople. A lot of times, people are trying to elevate their status, trying to be like um, a white collar salesperson, mm -hmm. and they invest a lot of money into client retainment and so mm -hmm. and into gifting and stuff like this and so uh why wouldn't a roofer do it and then how can a roofer get a ton of realtors like you are expert at speaking to a ton of realtors and selling a group of realtors so talk to them about your process of how how you built this business and how they can apply it to grow theirs yeah sure so just to give some context here mm -hmm. right so i've done about uh 800 realtor presentations to groups of 10 to 500 realtors. And mm -hmm. I've got 14 sales reps that do 50 to 150 of those same events all across the Eastern region. Okay. Right. And so this is a very, it's not hard. It's not rocket science. And so ultimately, if you want to do this, it's not something you can really dabble in. Maybe you just get one rep and this is that rep that focuses on that industry. And ultimately what you want to do is become part of their community, mm -hmm. become part of their community. How do you do that? Right? So the first thing is there's the realtor association, right? Become a member of the realtor association. They got networking, they got uh, events that you can sponsor that you can meet and then you can speak to them about what you do. How, what's the question to you is, let me ask you, Lee, like what's the value add that a roofer has for a realtor? Great question. So for a realtor, we are going to provide quick repairs, photo inspections. If the hail or wind has damaged your property, we can help get the insurance company to pay for that roof, replace it, add value to the home. Maybe that lets them sell the roof faster. Or maybe they have a roofing project that's holding up a close, or maybe they need a report written and they're like, the roof's fine. Mm -hmm. Having a roofer can go a long ways because a roofer a lot of time doesn't want to go write that report or doesn't want to do a small repair. But if you have a whole book of business with a roofer and that realtor can also potentially make a referral commission and also service their client, then it becomes a nice symbiotic mm -hmm. relationship. So, so right there, you just gave me a ton right there. So basically what I got from that is education. Mm -hmm. You can educate them on the value that you can bring to them. And so that's what you're going to need if you want to build a uh, break into the, to the real estate space. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to give you guys some quick, simple notes. Um, every real estate office typically has a sales meeting mm -hmm. Tuesday mornings right? Um, it could be every Tuesday morning or once a month or whatnot. And so you want to do research on the target area that you want to go after, research every single major real estate firm, right? And you want to start calling them and you want to join the local real estate association, mm -hmm. wherever the area. And so when you call these offices, it's really simple because what I'm giving you right now, you can, you can kind of almost sound like you're part of their community already. Like I'd call an office and I'd be like, they're like, Hey, this is Keller Williams. How can I help you? Hey, how's it going? This is Eric Chandler. I was looking to see who I can talk to about who sets up your office sales meetings. So one, like, how does he know you have office sales meetings? Right? Like, Oh, okay, cool. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be broker Joe. Let me transfer to broker Joe. Hey, broker Joe, this is Eric. I do with cutting edge gifts. Hey, we've been, we just joined your local realtor association. Uh, we've worked with a couple of different real estate firms in the office sponsoring their Tuesday morning meetings. Get them. Right. Um, and we were wondering if you had one coming up in the next month or so that we can stop by and sponsor for you. Oh, well, what do you do? Well, we're a roofer and what's the value out of having you in that meeting? Because yeah. you got to think, real estate agents and offices, they got people knocking down there. It's not going to be that easy. You, yeah. might get some, you might get a voicemail. Yeah. Right? And this is why I say you need, I would say, it's not just something you want to dabble in. I would mm -hmm. almost have one person that can be the Go face. Go all in. The, the, this person is the face for the real estate space. Mm -hmm. right? And they go to all the different offices. They go to all the different events. And so they're now being seen by everybody mm -hmm. right? and known by everybody in that real estate space. And after about five or six months, you start to build more of a reputation 
and it gets easy. So you get to one office, and then what you do, let's say it's a Caldwell Banker, for example. Mm -hmm. You go, you just get into with one Caldwell Banker office. You go to that broker in charge. You have all the other offices researched, and you just go and you say, hey, by the way, um, here's a bunch of other offices. Do you know any of the brokers in charge? The brokers in charge are the, basically the managers. Is there anybody that I can use your name as a referral? Nice. Yeah, so you just come up with the list. Can you just, and, and you make it super easy. Just highlight the ones I can use that, that you know, that I can use your name as a referral. Yep, sure. Oh, I know John. I know broker. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, cool. Now, what's the next call? Right? So first, what I did was, if you notice, I turned a cold call into a warm lead right. through the power of association. Nice. I have just joined your local realtor association. We started sponsoring some events. Somebody mentioned that you guys have Tuesday morning meetings and we'd love to come and see how we can add value. That was a cold call, right? But I, turned, I made it seem like we're part of the network already. So then now I call Broker Joe. Hey, uh, Broker Joe, I was just at... Susie's office down the street, we did a great job. We brought them food. So they're typically going to ask that you bring breakfast or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right now they're doing virtual. So, you know, you can get on a Zoom meeting and maybe just raffle something off. Nice. Right? That's it. That's it. Now so you call Susie and you got recommended to all of Susie's people. Um, you can also do at the associations, they have classes, mm -hmm. right? So you sponsor one of those classes and you do a raffle and you collect cards from every single person in that class. Here's why. Because the classes at associations are going to be a bunch of different realtors from all different brokerages. Mm. And so you get all their contact Each info. one is a whole community. Each one is a, their own, little, they're part of wow. their own other office. And so now that's a really easy way that I train my sales reps to break into the real estate community. Mm -hmm. do, a, do a local association, right? You get connected see, you, with everybody. You get it to make an immediate sell because they use uh, the gift. But the roofer may have to realize it's a long-term game in building the network because the roof, mm -hmm. the, the realtors are going to say, okay, well, I've got these properties with old roofs, these listings that you can go check out and run claims on. I've got this that I need estimates on right now. But the deal is, is that sometimes it's just about having that one person commit for a whole year and realizing that you're going to build a consistent business where people are constantly calling you, having you inspect roofs, whether they're inspecting for damage or doesn't matter what service you are. And, you know, there's also realtors, but property managers are in the same property space. Manager, yeah. And for me, I don't, as a guy doing construction, a very important space. And so what he's talking about, a lot of times, you know, you can, you can get in with the property management companies in the same exact way. Yeah. And then the, to, f to finish up the strategy here, right? Is you get everybody's car for a roofer. If I was a roofer, every single meeting I would do, I'd give a raffle. And then they've got to either text, if it's zoom, they're texting you their name and email and you do the raffle live. Boom. Those are all contacts. Now that you can call, you can grab lunch with, you can call and say, Hey, is there any homes that you need? You know, you can, you can just do some prospecting, right? And you start to build those relationships. And after six months to a year of meeting thousand or so realtors, how many of them have to really be referring you regularly to have a ton of deals? You know what I mean? And so you're now, so we talk about top of mind awareness. That's what we do for our business, for, for different businesses. We help them create a top of mind awareness. How can you be the first person that pops into a real estate agent's mind when they, the word roof comes up? Roof, Lee. Yeah, let's give Lee a call. How many realtors can you have that think of you every single time? And if you can do that, there's not really a ton of roofers that are really doing this at a high level. I know because I'm in the space mm -hmm. with realtors. And that's what I think it would take. It would take one dedicated rep that's, this is our realtor rep, mm -hmm. if you will, that builds relationships with realtors. He takes them to lunch. He sponsors their meetings. He's. Yeah, I think, I think that a roofing office should have an insurance agent person that goes just mm -hmm. after insurance agents and a person that goes just after realtors. Mm -hmm. And if you follow that plan, I mean, that was mapped out to the T. Like you literally mapped out the scripts, the pitch. That was a hell of a lesson. I think I will put that in the university. I'll cut that out and zip it up and button it up. Put it five right minutes in. on how to get with realtors. Yeah, yeah, boy. Yeah, it works. I mean, dude, you got all the and then before you know it, you're gonna have all these cards. And then what are you gonna do? You're gonna market to them. You could uh, market to them on Facebook. Now yeah, you got one all of my emails. one of my one of my clients who already had a lot of realtors. He once he had a big audience, brought in Ryan Serhant, paid him to be a speaker, and they had an event. And then they mm -hmm. just had all the community of people they already knew, plus more people come. And, you know, just so that they can... Yeah, host a, host a, hey, why don't you just host a, you know, a, a monthly or quarterly appreciation event for Absolutely. all my, for my realtors. Hey, we're going to come together. We're going to have a couple of drinks over here. There's going to be some live music, whatever. Mm. Just create an event. Make it fun. Bring in a speaker. Bro, we're going to be killing it. We're about to uh, launch our Miami office, our Fort Lauderdale office. Nice. Uh, big, big news. I'm, I'm working with some big players down there. We got some big stuff all the way from West Palm, Jupiter, all the way to Miami. So... Um, I want to be collaborating more. I'm, I'm also going to be doing a little bit 
of uh, my whole marketing team and everything is down there. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time. We, we got to spend more time together, guys. See, the thing is, is that... Go fishing. Yeah, for real. <laughs> uh, this guy, is a, he's a dynamic recruiter, dynamic salesperson. He's a CEO. He's a young guy. And, you know, the grit that it takes uh, growing up a wrestler, can you... I want to dig a little bit and unpack a little bit of what makes you tick. Because, man, you're, you're a really great business person. Um, everybody out there, wants people like you working with their company. I think that, you know, wrestlers is a great community of people to go to. Mm -hmm. uh, really, but most of them, Russell Brunson's a wrestler. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's a smart guy too, real smart guy. You're smart too, I'm saying, fucking guy's a genius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, talk to me a little bit about um, growing up as a wrestler and how that's helped you. Yeah, man. So uh, I started wrestling when I was nine years old. And I remember being a kid, and, and I kind of had a little bit of a natural ability. I did other sports before that, and my dad was my coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember him telling me, you know, before a tournament, uh, it was a state tournament, kid state tournament, right? And he was like, hey, Eric, I think you could be the state champion at your age level. And he said, if you do whatever I say, I can promise you you're going to be the state champion. But you got to do it without question. So I said, all right, I'll do it. He told me to run, I ran. He told me to jump, I jumped. Take another shot, I took another shot. So I, in my mind, all I had to do, whatever he said, and I was going to be a state champion as a kid. And so at nine or 10 years old, I was militant with it. You know, just whatever he said, boom, boom, boom. And that was my focus. Every day I trained with my twin brother and I went to the state tournament and I destroyed it. And that was my first, that was my first time learning, you have a goal, you work effortlessly to achieve it. And you hard constantly work pays believe off. it, visualize that. Mm -hmm. The more work you put into it, the luckier, yeah. the better chance you have. Yeah, I didn't have to worry about my, um, this goes back to coaching, right? I didn't have to worry about um, my ability to figure it out. You know, in my mind, it was just him. And whatever he said I did, and that, that's all I needed to focus on. Um, but then, you know, growing it through high school, just compounded on that, winning state titles. And then, um, you know, I think also a lot of drive comes from like growing up, you know, when I was left to go wrestle in college, a lot of my family was living in a homeless shelter. Oh, a lot man. of people don't know that, yeah. Wow. I remember being six years old, and walking into my 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 uh my laundry room, my mom, she was crying. Oh man. And she was crying and I knew it was just money. And I was like, Don't worry, mom, one day I'm gonna make so much money. I'm gonna buy you a house, you never have to worry about anything. And uh now through the company that I've built, all my family members have jobs, they actually all work for me. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, brother. and wrestling is what gave me the drive, the determination, the grit to go through anything that I faced in business. No shit. Yeah. That's fucking badass, dude. Mm -hmm. A great story, man. Um, you know, guys, I don't know what you're doing to anchor your goals or your dreams or how hard you're working or how hard you're training. But look, I look out there, I see average contractors wanting more guys stuck in growth, but they're unwilling to do the fucking work. Mm -hmm. And the reality is every time that you don't finish a task, every time you say you're going to do something, you don't do it. Every time you don't buy in to somebody who has what you want, says do this, and you don't buy into it, you don't do it, it's just more disbelief on your mission. And I just know that, uh, guys, if you'll just start taking action, that you'll get more belief. If you just start putting yourself through a little bit of the hard work, then you'll get a little bit luckier. Well, you know, we're, we're always in a state of momentum. I was just covering this. I'm, I run an elite call every morning at 745 with my top sales reps. And, we're, you know, the, the, the theme of this month is raising your standard and honoring your commitment. So raising your standard and what you're committing to and then honoring every commitment that you make to yourself and to others, right? And we're always at a state of momentum. Whether your, your momentum could be declining that's when you don't do what you say you're going to do. You don't honor your commitments or you can be at a state of momentum where you're building where, you know, you get up out of the morning, you get that workout in, boom, you're starting to build momentum. You're building that day and every day compounds, right? And so it's just, you're, you're always at a state of momentum, either going backwards or forwards. So that's, that's kind of what we've been focusing on in our, with our sales team, you know, and just honoring those commitments and well, compounding. Con I them. love that, dude. You got to talk with your sales team daily. Contact beats content. Make, mix in the personal development into coaching your team and i'm sure the way your dad coached you and whether you had good wrestling coaches besides your dad coaching you has also helped you become a better business leader as well and mm -hmm. coach for your guys um man i can't wait to meet your team dude um tell these guys how they can get a hold of you and 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 what they can do like if you have a special you said you had a special deal for my guys yeah 15 off you better hook them up yeah. 
So yeah, so so best way to get a hold of me, you can call me, you can text me, you can email me. My number is 336-437-2102. I'm sure it'll be in the show notes somewhere, I guess. Um, yeah, just shoot me a text with your name and email. Tell me that you mentioned that uh, mentioned this podcast, and uh, you know I'll hook you up with five hundred dollars in free cutco for your own personal house if you uh, decide to place an order with us. Um, but ultimately, what I want everybody to know is my commitment to the roofing industry. Right, I see such a big need for client appreciation, and really just a lot of other businesses do this. I just don't see it all that much in roofing. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be that person that can be the catalyst for really how to create raving fans through appreciation in that space. And using and, and, and the result of that will be a better business, happier clients, more referrals, more repeat business. Um, and I just think it's good business practice that I'm bringing to the space. Guys, it's really worked for me. Uh, out of the first batch that we sent, we got a ton of referrals. I'm about to re-up and send a bunch more cutting boards out. So look, Take advantage of that. Reach out with Eric. Can they connect with you on Instagram? Instagram, yep. Cutting Edge Eric. Cutting, at Cutting Edge Eric. All right, cool. That's me. All right, well, I'm taking you up on that fishing trip. I'll take you fishing. Uh, there's some awesome gold nuggets in this episode. We talked about uh, recruiting and scaling the Cutco way. We talked about uh, managing sales teams. We talked about uh, wrestling, and, and, and we talked about really executing at the highest level uh, – penetrating the real estate space, which could be a huge space for a contractor to get a ton of referrals from. And using that same strategy, you can get insurance agents, property managers. Each niche is going to refer you roofs, and then you have a business and not just uh, a transaction. And the more that you actually have a business, the more that you can actually have time to enjoy the American dream. And just that's what you're doing, all the hard work, leg work. And the problem is, is everybody just doesn't want to do the work. They want to snap their finger, get the results. You got to have fun with the work. You got to realize there's no end to this journey. And it's okay. You're right where you're supposed to be. But it's also time for you to get started executing what you learned in this episode. So like, subscribe, get notifications, comment below anything that you learned here that you're going to apply. And I want to say thank you for watching this. Appreciate you. Thanks for being here, Eric. Yep. Thanks really for appreciate having me. you. Appreciate it. We'll see you, bud.